something that if you want to continue to kind of have that really delicate flavor, you don't want to overmask it. So we make in French, we call it a Vier sauce, which is just like raw tomato and shallot, olive oil, a little lemon juice. Is that like a fancy ketchup? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it just means like raw. So you just put that little over the top of it. It's going to be super, super cool. clean. Hey everybody, welcome Tommy the Fishmonger. We are down here in beautiful downtown San Diego, Tuna Harbor Dockside Market. We're down here at G Street Mall for you old timers. Used to be, San Diego was the largest tuna fishing fleet in the world. Everybody was here, Ralston Perina, AJ Hines, Checkerboard Square, Bumblebee, Starkist, a plethora of companies and all kinds of families. We're running fishing boats and building boats, but today we've got an exciting chef. Travis Swikard. How's it going? Restaurant. Yeah. Good. You Very ready? Good. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks We're going to get fishy. We're going to get jiggy with it. We're going to have all kinds of fun. Remember, local seafood has changed the game. It's no longer considered a luxury item. We're bringing seafood into our own San Diego for you to enjoy it throughout our great restaurants in the city. Right? Absolutely. And chefs are coming down here and they're hand picking fish right from the fishermen and what we like to call hashtag meet the fleet. You come down here. You see a plethora of seafood, educate yourself, ask questions, know your source because not all seafood is created equally. I also like to mention good seafood's not cheap, cheap seafood's not good. We're going to get fishy, we're going to get jiggy with it, we're going to take a walk and we're going to have some fun. Let's do it. Let's do it. First we're going to check out, I'm looking at local halibut. Look at this beautiful fish right here. These are absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to pull one up here. This is a 25 pounder. Wow. Look at that. This is beautiful. Buy the whole wow. fish or buy fillets. This is great stuff, right, Chef? Look wow, at that. Wow, beautiful. This yeah. is perfect, right? Look how fresh that one is. Yeah. Uh, I don't like to, to do too much with it because they're, they're not, uh, they don't have, the, the steaks aren't as big, so you want to be cook it very delicately. So you don't want to overpower the fish. You Absolutely. want that fish flavor. You want the fish to speak for itself. Especially a white, a white bottom fish like that. You don't want to. It's not going to be like very steaky or strong. You want it to be uh, eat more delicately. So right, and and it, and it is. It's very delicate. It's fatty, um, flaky. Not so much fat like its cousin, the northern halibut. Right. Um, and this is a beautiful thresher shark. You know, um, thresher sharks rated green. I mean, it's pretty cool cooks up well, right? Absolutely, and that's a, that's a steak fish, yeah. Yeah, you definitely want a steak on this, goes yeah. well on a char broiler. Right, absolutely. Right? Um, thresher shark with the California fishermen, it's a sustainable species, it's a sustainable fishery, um, not like other sharks throughout the world. California fishermen are under great regulations, so you can trust the fact that you're buying sustainable seafood, especially down here at Tuna Harbor Dockside Market. This is one of those fish, all fish you should let it rest for at least a day, but uh, this, especially this guy probably rests for at least three or four days out of the water. I, th uh, I think he's resting yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're down here at Joanna's Fresh Crab. Something that's really cool that you don't see a lot of those are beautiful. Right? Are these California golden wow. king crabs. Look at that, right? Those are amazing. Not a whole lot of meat, but very, very sweet, very tender, very delicate. Unlike its cousin, the Alaskan king crab, which get massive and huge. These are beautiful. Um, they're fun. They're fairly thin shelled. What would you do with that, chef? Obviously, the claws have a little bit of a meat in there. But the best way to, to utilize something like this is, you know, make a really nice like egg yolk uh, tagliarini or, or uh, <clears throat> a pasta. So that basically you can get like two main courses out of this guy. If you try to serve that by itself, you're not going to be able, it's not going to be enough meat to actually sustain. So I like to put it in like a, a pasta and spread it out. Now we have the box crab. These are really nice, sweet, Incredible. tender meat, right? Yeah. Little bit of an issue getting in there. It's a little tough shelled, right? And one thing about crab crustaceans, the more defense mechanism they have, the better they taste. Like a sea urchin, it's full of spines and everything, and the sheep head comes down and they eat those sea yeah. urchin and all that. Same thing with this box crab. Yeah. I'm looking down the line here and I'm seeing spot prawns. Uh oh. Right? Good. Thank, so thank you so good. much. Thank nice you. And I know what I'm having for dinner tonight. Awesome. Yeah. My name's Travis, I'll see you Thanks, soon. Travis. Cheers. 
Travis, look at this. The aye, gem aye, of aye. the sea, right? Yeah, those are beautiful. Look at that. My favorite. Now, rare. Yes. Rare on the tail, right? Yes. And certain parts of the year, they have eggs in them, which is absolutely beautiful, right? Yeah. You use that as a garnish or I personally go for the eggs uh, yeah. before anything else. And what would you do? What would you do with this? I was working at three Michelin star restaurants in, in New York, and we buy these guys for forty dollars a pound. It's best to cook them right away, or you need to take them from live, blanch them for fifteen seconds, and just like kind of shock them. A, a live guy like this, once it comes out of the water, it's going to start kind of like eating its own flesh. So it'll start to get soft, you know, after a day or two if it's not in the water, not eating, not in its natural habitat. So you want to kind of preserve it as fast as you can, or or eat it like that right away. It's super sweet and it's the ama heavy, so it's it's a. Uh, so you it's you, best to eat raw. You were you, paying forty dollars a pound. Oh yeah. You guys hear that? Did you hear that? He was paying forty dollars a pound in New York for this. Yeah. Wow. To get them live in New York, they're forty dollars a pound. FedEx. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, you, you have two great uses for this. This is, you can make amazing sushi with this. You can do a crudo. Um, I love to do like a simple Spanish preparations called gamba salajillo, which is just like, just bring up some olive oil, put the shrimp in there. I just split the shrimp down the back and cook it in the shell. Saute in olive oil, finish with a bunch of garlic, parsley, lemon juice. It's the most simple preparation, but you're gonna get, taste the shrimp the most. And the flavor of the shrimp goes inside the olive oil, and then you use like some toasted bread afterwards and dip it in the olive oil and you get like the, the best flavor, you know. Awesome. I don't. Want, I don't want to put breadcrumbs. I don't want to put a bunch no. of stuff. And then you get to use the head afterwards to make an amazing soup, or, or you know, make a, a butter with it, or whatever. And you have like those, you know, multiple uses with it. So there we go. Amazing. Local spot prawns harvested right here off the coast of Southern California, coming in live down here at the Dockside Market. Come down, check it out. Amazing, guys. Great stuff. I'm Travis Weikert. Here we are back at Smarts Farm in San Diego. We're in San Diego, but we're actually cooking Spanish cuisine now.